Welcome to the Ripples Teacher Workshop Series, sponsored by Fulbright Canada Eco Leadership Program in partnership with RBC, the Great Lakes Aquarium in Duluth, Minnesota, and the Minnesota State DNR Minaqua Program. Today, we are going to learn how to build an estuary or wetlands model. Estuaries and wetlands are very important ecosystems because they help to filter water to keep it clean before it enters lakes and also to um, provide very unique habitats within themselves. The model we're going to make today is um, meant to be an estuary but it would also work very well as a wetlands model. What you'll need to make your model is a hot temperature hot glue gun with several extra glue sticks a painting pan, an exacto knife, and a cutting board, in my case a piece of cardboard, and two hydrophilic sponges. You can also use a grouting sponge which you find in the tiling section of your home improvement store. First of all we're going to talk about our pan. Most other wetlands models use a roasting pan that you then elevate to get the right slope you need to have water run through your sponges. I like paint pans, which you also find in a home improvement store, because they're already elevated in one section, so you get the right slope, and then you have this nice section down here to catch the water you pour through it so it doesn't slosh out and make a mess. A good thing to do before you start putting your wetlands together is to put your sponges inside your pan and pour a little bit of water over it to see where the water goes. One of the big tricks about using water in experiments is that you need the water to go where you want it to go in order to show the effect. So you don't want it to go down the sides or underneath your sponges because then the effect is lost. In the case of this paint pan, I found that the water ran down the two little side channels on the side. So we're gonna fill those in by taking our hot glue gun and just squeezing a stream of hot glue down the side. So we want to remove the escape channel for that water. And do it on both sides. And we're going to let that dry, and while that's drying, we're going to cut our sponge. Now to cut your sponge, what you're going to do is you're going to lay it long ways, and you're going to scour about, cut it into thirds, say. You're going to scour a light cut just right there, long ways. It doesn't have to be very deep. It's only about as deep as the tip of my finger. And then you're going to go over a third and cut another one. Then you're going to flip the sponge over horizontally and you're going to cut it into three pieces while it's horizontal. And you're going to cut the sponge all the way down and it helps to spread the sponge while you're cutting. Oops, so there's the first piece. And then you're going to cut it again into almost equal pieces. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then with the two side pieces, you're going to flip it over and see where you scoured and see how it's not very deep. Well, I'm going to scour it again, almost to the bottom, on both sides. So it's about like that. And that's because you want part of your sponge to be relatively shallow, so you can see where your water's going. And then you're going to cut the middle chunk out. Just like that. So you have a cross section like that. It also helps with your sides to cut the very edge, the inner edge off, because it just helps you see into the channel a little bit better. I'm going to repeat the same thing with the other edge. So I'm going to scour it till it's almost to the bottom. 
and then cut it out. If you accidentally cut through your sponge, that's fine. Just glue it next to each other inside the pan and no one will know the difference. So those are two, my two edges. I'm just going to cut the edge off of this one. Now the middle one is a little bit more tricky. So you find where you scoured it on this side and you're not going to cut through those scours. What you're going to do is make another one just a little bit further away. Just like that. So there's your first one and your second one. And you're going to take your second one and follow that to the bottom. And then you're going to cut just a little bit in from the very edge. that one to the bottom and then it's that chunk right there near the edge that you're going to cut out. You're going to do it again on the other side so you're going to scour a new edge. You'll see why in a minute. I'm going to cut in from the very edge. There's your middle. And then that bit that's left behind from where you scoured it before, you're just going to cut that edge off, like the corners on the ed end pieces. And then you just put your sponge back together. So you have this nice jigsaw pattern going through it. And what's nice about this particular pattern, so your water will enter this sponge and filter through. This section right here, instead of having a straight channel, helps slow the water down to filter through. And we didn't cut it to be directly in line with the channel because the little particulate matter that you'll put into your model while you're using it will just sneak around those edges and come out. So you want it a little bit offset to help slow everything down so it really has to filter through. So that's how you cut a sponge. Now I've already cut one to save a little bit of time. And so we're going to now put our sponges in our roasting pan. Ro not a roasting pan, a paint pan. So you're going to lay your sponges in your paint pan, longwise, like this. And you want as much sponge on the surface of your pan as possible. And so what helps to do is to take the squares that you just cut off of, out of your sponges and use those again. Kind of choose the skinnier edge and you can cut them. You can cut them into smaller pieces, small skinny little pieces, which you can then take and stick along the sides and down the middle and between the sponges, especially at the very beginning and the very end, is where I find it really needs it. And I like to put all of the pieces in before I glue them in to make sure it fits because something you don't want your sponges to do is to get too crowded because what will happen is what you've just cut out especially these bits they'll fold in and so you won't be able to see much of your water and in worst case scenario these will pop up in the center and so the water will run underneath them and you'll lose the effect. So now we can glue our sponges in and so first I'm going to glue in the little side pieces so it's just a strip of glue on the bottom. And then I'm going to glue in my main sponge. So you take the bottom piece and you go up and around the, the edge and you fit it right about here. I like putting it right about where the ledge starts. This other 
your sponge out of the way. And you don't want to glue your middle piece in. You want to be able to take that out to illustrate uh, damaging or destroying a wetland. Because then you can put it back in to show the restoration of a wetland. So I'm going to glue my top piece in. Fix my glue gun. Okay. I'm going to glue my top piece in. So same idea. Just around the edge. And glue that right in there. So then you have a removable middle piece, and these two are in the same place. So, and that's because when you pour the water in, you don't want everything to get knocked down. You don't want to wash out your wetland into your lake. So we'll glue in. Get the one next to it. Put the middle one in for reference. And then glue the very top one. Now you would usually have, you would also have the uh, these little ones coming down the side as well. And then I'm going to put a little chunk right at the top so water doesn't run, in, run down in between them. And then the last trick to making sure that your water goes into your sponges and not anywhere else is to basically caulk it. So how you do that is you just take your hot glue gun and you draw a line of hot glue along the bottom edge of your sponge and then up into any corners or crevices where the sponges meet each other. Another trick is if you have, if the very tip of your sponge is a little bit high, you can cut that away. To make it a little bit lower to help the water go up and over into your wetland. So when you're done, it should look something like this, with two removable pieces in the middle. And then put back. Another possibility is to just use one sponge. These were hydrophilic sponges. A grouting sponge is slightly larger, and so you only need one for your pan. I turn this one sideways, and so this is the middle piece that comes out, and I just cut two channels into the sponge horizontally, and then you have the two little islands in the middle. And then I used the squares I had cut out to help hold it in. And that is how you construct an estuary or a wetlands model that you can then destroy, restore, and manage.